Hello guys. I get a chance to do the video. That would be so awesome. Hopefully I get to have my brothers here with me to share with you Esther, their experience and um, what the Lord is doing in their lives up here on this mountain. So tune in. Hey brothers and sisters and YouTube family, hope you guys are being blessed. I know it's been a while. I'm here on the mountain in our little house. We haven't named it yet, but this is a community house right now until each individual of our hermitages are built. So I'm here with um, Brother Adam and Brother James Jeremiah, myself included, and Brother Joseph. And we have bunk beds as well to sleep. Um, and the one of us has a mattress that sleeps on the floor, but it's a pretty spacious area. And maybe when I clean it, then I'll show you guys. But um, the Lord really put on my heart uh, during adoration that his desire is to have um, little mornings. Mornings uh, with a little mother or uh, little um, times. Um, I don't say little times. I say mornings with you guys and just share my readings with you guys as to what the Lord is really working my soul. Which means that it's very open, transparent, and honest because the Lord um, really deals with issues in my heart when I sit before him and so I think he wants me to share that with you guys and um hopefully you know I, I don't know when I'll be going down to town because here we have a trouble with the internet connections on my laptop and your connection on my phone but not on my laptop so what I do just daily I'll just you know share my readings daily just you know kind of sit with you guys and share what the Lord is speaking to my heart and when I get to town I'll just upload them and then schedule them so then um on my channel they would just little daily daily morning readings i guess with a little mother maybe that's what i call it daily morning wings with a little mother a little to figure out whatever we call it and sometimes i may have my brother james and brother adam join me too as well um i ask them you know to just share their testimony share their heart with the lord speaking to them so you guys have an idea of what's going on here in this franciscan community or this prairie mountain because a lot to be learned here in this community and i've come to recognize and realize the reason why the lord will call anyone here to come to this refuge, to actually come and just stay for a while. The purpose of this mountain is not only prayer, but to conquer our will, to conquer ourself. That is our sole purpose. So anyone who's come, want, desiring to come here thinking that this is a getaway from the trials, the troubles that they're going through, or to run away from situations that or storms or fire that the Lord has put you in, that fire is going to follow you here. Because this place is one-on-one -on -one just with yourself which is your flesh, your own nature, and killing that nature that truly Christ may dwell in you fully. And that's why you're here. So anyone who desires to really want to come to know the Lord in intimacy, really burn for fire for holiness, and really desire to conquer this flesh nature that continues to get, get in the way, as the Word of God says, Paul spoke, you know, that this flesh is always in enmity with the Spirit. So if you want to just kill that flesh, this is the place to do it. And so I just want to share with you what the Lord's really been teaching me for the past six months and what work he's been doing in my heart. One of the virtues I know he really wants to go is obedience. And obedience, once again, to our superiors, which is Mother Claire and Father Ezekiel. Many of us who have come uh, on this mountain have come from a place of just independence, relying solely on the Holy Spirit, you know, walking with Jesus, really not having anybody kind of authority over us. I was uh, involved in a church, and so I think it was Brother James who was involved in ministry. Brother Adam, he wasn't at all. You know, he just, um, the Lord really catched his heart on fire, and he really had no community, no Christian friends around him. So this is the first time for him to encounter that. And so um, Brother Joseph, too, as well, came from a place of ministry. But I say it to say is that uh, we just had maybe pastors, you know, kind of over us in regards to um, the church, but never really just over individual, the state of our souls. We're just used to praying, listening to the Holy Spirit and doing what you want, you know, doing what the Holy Spirit is telling us. And in this place, you cannot do that. The Lord has really put a covering and an honor over Mother and Father Ezekiel that he's desired that would walk in obedience to them and recognize that truly as they speak, they're speaking the divine will of God every time, every request, everything that acts of us, even the smallest to the tiniest to things that may not seem spiritual or whatever it may be, it is the Lord speaking. And she really wants us to yield in obedience to that because we're able to yield in obedience to them. And then we're really able to yield in obedience uh, to the Holy Spirit once we leave this place. And I believe that's what the Lord is doing. And I know for me, my walk, you know, uh, as I've since done so many videos, one area I would just recognize, I'm like, man, I felt like the Lord is so demanding of me, you know? I look to my other peers and my other counterparts. I'm like, man, I feel like the Lord is not as demanding of others as he is of me. And I, I sometimes be frustrate me. I used to be resentful of that as well, you know, and especially the Lord's, and, and then the enemy would come in to make the Lord seem like this harsh taskmaster over me. 
but coming here, I've recognized it's such a beautiful grace for the Lord to demand much of me because he's given me much graces as well. And not only that too as well, but being here with mother and father Ezekiel, they also too demand much of me. And I've recognized why they, the Lord has put them over me spiritually because they're perfect to form, um, form what the Lord wants to do in me, form me spiritually, form me in virtues uh, and really crucifying the areas of my flesh. The biggest one, which is uh, against any demands of the Lord, is self-will, just your self-will, your self-desire, self-will, just the things that you want to do yourself. So one thing I remember when I got here, I struggled with that because I was just used to, you know, being in my mother's house having hours to myself to pray with the lord spend time with him and then do what i wanted to do and then being here it was like that would just all cut out and it's like you know i was so frustrated just being called here jackie not this none of this not that being pulled left and right i was just so frustrated and at some point i had to actually confess that before mother and father you know the lord had me confess my sins you know my frustration my resentment towards that and i remember what mother said to me which stuck to me so fervently she said Okay, for your penance, just remember your your time is not your your time is not your own anymore. It's God's time, and so that's I recognize. Okay, my time is not my own. It's God's time. As I've come here to this place, my desire to die to self is that I'm not my own anymore. I am the Lord, and so whatever He wants to do with my time, whether it's just in prayer with Him, whether it's just you know serving others, being charitable, um, you know doing the things that are asked of me, that's what His desire, and I need to yield to what He wants to do at that time. And I think that's the biggest biggest challenge for every single person that's been here because we're all so independent you know on our own before we came here and now we have to yield to someone else and who, who can be you know which can be very demanding you know any little small things at any point you're just like that okay you can call it again you have to do this you have to go you know there and so it can be very tedious but I think when you unite it to the Lord and I the times where I'm just like and if I'm a self flesh rising frustration, I was like, okay, Jesus, the point is you're doing this with me. We're doing this together. And not only that, but I get to do it for you and to you because I see Jesus as a mother and father Ezekiel. So I'm doing this to the Lord as well. And when you see that way, I think it'll, it'll help with any believer, honestly, with whatever God's called to do, to see Christ in every single soul in the guise of every single person, um, however honorable they are or however the least they may be. You know, whether it's someone who's homeless or someone who is sick and dying, that is Jesus, is Jesus. So then when we do all things, we have to do it with the motive of love and do it because of the will of God. And the Lord's teaching me that I'm so not there yet. So I want to share with you my readings today. Hmm. So first, I always do worship. And in worship, I would encourage anyone who's desiring to really commune with the Lord intimacy. It's really in worship. The word of God says that we come to his courts in thanksgiving and praise. That's where he meets us. So I love dwelling prayer and that's my the the that's the most um that's the longest time I really spend time with the Lord is in dwelling prayer, just worshiping him and having him speak over me with the lyrics. We have to recognize that Jesus speaks in so many different ways and speaks all the time. Anyone who's desired to hear God's voice, he's speaking to you. But you just don't recognize it. But the biggest way to recognize that I encourage you is in worship. Get a playlist. Ask Holy Spirit to, you know, to pick the songs. Click shuffle. And allow him just to minister to you to the songs. So I did that. Let me tell you what Jesus ministered to me today. So, my reading. This Rayma card I got about um, two days ago. I don't know if you guys can see it. But it says, Pre prepare yourself for suffering. And this is from St. Faustina's diary that I use it for reading every day. And it says, thank the Lord for the grace of this warning. Keep strengthening yourself with prayer. A little suffering so you can endure when the greater ones come. And I was like, Lord, okay, that's cool. I'm learning here at this place definitely to have a joy in suffering, rejoice in suffering, and recognizing that is the Lord's called me to, to pick up my cross, deny myself, and follow him. And so, but at times, you know, when I get these readings, I'm just like, well, every day there's something that I could offer to you is suffering. But when I get this one big one, I'm just like, oh, Lord, okay, I don't know what it is. And, of course, all these thoughts come to my mind, all these anxious thoughts of could it be this, could it be that. Because a lot of times with me, with the um, trials of the Lord's lives, fiery trials are so intense every time. And I think I've mentioned to you guys, the Lord has spoken to me. He's like, Nana, you're created to dance in the fire. I was created to dance in the fire. So the point is that he's created me to walk with him and walk with him. The walk, the airways narrow, and it's going to be very fiery. It's going to be very fiery. But the point is that he'll give me grace to dance in the midst of the fire. So when I got this reading again, I'm, I, I didn't dance. I'm just like, oh, okay, Lord, give me the grace, you know, to just endure whatever it is that, you, you know, you allow and whatever you will, whatever that may be. And so I kind of put it to the side, you know, uh, 
to the side and yesterday was a really really rough day with father ezekiel and mother um especially father ezekiel was suffering really bad the lord's passion it was a, a really rough day for all of us so just a day of prayer constant prayer as the lord was telling us to pray for the indifference in the church and pray for our nation that they're st we're still not out of um the red zone you know they still have things planned for our nation to cause about either war or cause about chaos so i'll just really interesting in praying for that so as i um put this down again then he played the songs today, and the songs today were all in preparation for, like, Nana. I'm going to ask of you something. I need you to surrender and give it to, you know, I'm going to ask of you something, you know, a trial is coming, and I need you to kind of lay it down and trust me. And I'm just like, whoo. Oh. And he played all the songs. Sometimes he plays that one song, I know, okay, maybe a situation is coming. But he played all the songs that he uses all the time to tell me storms are coming all together. And I'm like, Lord. I have no idea what's ahead of me. Please help me. So the first song plays Forever Jones called Hold Me Still. The song was like, I see the storms raging. The, the rivers are rising. The waters are rising. The storm is coming. Lord, hold me still. And I was like, okay, Lord, I don't know what storm is coming, but Lord, hold me still. And the second one is Oceans. And every time the Lord plays Oceans, I'm telling you, that's been a staple for me in my walk with the Lord, that he's telling me, okay, you're continue to walk on water. This is gonna whatever I'm whatever I'm gonna allow is gonna stretch your faith. Trust me. Would you continue to walk on this water with me? You know, the Holy Spirit lead me. What the scripture, the lyrics say, uh, Spirit lead me when my um, trust is without borders. When my trust is without borders. The Holy Spirit lead me. You just when I get that song, a lot of times I'm just like, I do get a little bit like, <laughs> find it a little bit like, Lord, please. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, all right, that's cool. And then he played, um, uh, I forgot what the, the group's name is, but no, sorry, the song's called Thy Will Be Done. Thy will be done. And it's talking about um, basically um, that, you know, I didn't know that your broken, my broken heart is part of your plan, but that will be done. Like I did everything that you said you asked me to do, but I find myself in this situation. That will be done. And so I'm just like, I've had that too as well as a lot of situations and trials in my life where I found myself like, Lord, I begged you, like you said these, you said, that I know I heard your voice. I listened to you and look what's happened. And so I was like, man, Lord. And then the second song he played, I Surrender by Hill song. And when I get that song, that's also another um, song he's speaking to me saying that I'm going to ask something of you and I need you to lay it down. We just surrender. We just surrender to my will. So at that point, I was like, Lord, I don't know what you have planned. I don't know what cross you have ahead of me but i just surrender i just surrender to that and of course then all this another song you play was uh by Tor uh, Tor Toron, if i'm not um, mistaken Toron wells and it's called my story is not over and the whole point of this song is saying that he's writing your story he's writing your story right now it looks like everything is ruined burnt ashes around you but he's writing your story he's not even done with you yet he's not over yet and lord's been praying that consistently uh, for me not that song but song similar to that since I've been here because right now it seems like everything around me has been burned to ashes you know it seems like everything I've been stripped of everything and everyone and everything seems dead but God continues to remind me that no 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 I'm making beauty out of ashes I'm gonna resurrect things like this is just the beginning and so that was really really encouraging but I'm still still going back and forth with this this trial that's coming I'm like Lord help me Jesus so, of course, the readings he gave me then to kind of from the after I did the Lord's Supper. I did Lord's Supper and um, just um, just sat with him, you know, and I used some of the holy books to get Raymond readings as to what was on his heart for me. And so the first one he gave me was um, about obedience. It was from St. Faustina's Diary of um, Divine Mercy, and that's helped me so much in my walk. Um with the Lord really even before I came here because a lot of times I don't understand what's going on but every time he speaks to this book and I feel like um kind of called to the same calling that she had uh concerning just pleading for mercy for the salvation of souls and so in this book she was giving instruction from the Lord that she should speak to her superiors about everything about everything and do not do anything without their permission I only do with the acts of you once again, I told you about obedience. So I was like, okay, Lord. So I'm wondering, I was like, are they going to, uh, was Mother and Father Zico asking me something? Or are they going to ask me something that kind of go against my self-will? Because in the book, that's what she mentioned. She recognized before the Lord that she has so much self-will. And that she needs to lay down and how just wretched she was in self-will. So she laid that down and said, okay. She's going to look to the superiors as the voice of the Lord and leaders before her. So anything that she, the Lord asks her to do, um, I love what Jesus said, like, even if I ask you to do something and go to your superiors and they tell you no, I'd rather be pleased that you honor and obey them rather than obeying my voice. Uh, because once again, it's the Lord is, I've recognized God as a God of order as far as authority wise, those he puts over you. And so um, once again, this is new to me and all of us who are here. 
So I was like, okay, Lord. And then the second reading kind of affirmed that too as well. Where he gave me, he says here, St. Mary Magdalene of Depaza never looked at a person of the superior commanding her, but saw in her the person of God. Neither did she ever obey for any reason other than to do the will of God. Whatever her superiors commanded her, she regarded as imposed by the divine authority. Willingly, she obeyed everyone from the priors down to the cook, and in obeying, she experienced great happiness and delight. So I was like, okay, Lord, once again affirming, non he wants me to be obedient not only to them, but to everyone here who acts of me things. And I'm like, okay, Lord. And um, in my heart, I feel like I have been doing that, but I was like, okay, maybe something is coming up where it will kind of go against what I desire, what I will. And he wants me to lay down my will to really yield uh, to the divine authority that God has given me, that they are my divine authority. So when they speak, when they ask of me things, when they um, give me instructions, I need to be obedient to them. And then the third reading I got was from the imitation of Mary which I love so much I use that um just to hear blessed mother's voice what she has to say and so I asked her today you know what before praying the rosary like same thing I need to work on and she gave me the disposition of time of trial and I know this exactly once again it's, it's affirming this particular reading about prepare yourself for suffering so this is Mary speaking she says my child God would not lie to be tempted tested or tormented to be on your strength his help will always be equal to the trials he sends give heed to his grace for it's already speaking to you and responds in his inspirations. If God has more crosses in store for someone, he gives greater graces that the person may bear them. Crosses are the most precious gifts God can give to his creatures. And the creature accepting them is the most pleasing sacrifice it can offer to his creator. If the crosses he intends for you are heavy, that means he has great plans for your sanctification. Do you want to prevent those divine plans being fulfilled? Your disturbance and fears will not take the crosses from you. Whatever you do, you must carry them. What then is it the wiser thing to do? Is to submit, my child, to all that God bids you to do. You must say, the Lord is my master. Let him do with me as he best, thinks best. Luke 1, 38. Then you will see God moved by your submission. Faithful to his promises, he will make lighter than you thought the possible the crosses in which, from a distance, seem so heavy. He will make them so light that you will say, just as we share abundantly the sufferings of Christ, so too, through Christ to receive consolation in equal measure. 2 Corinthians 1 5. Amen. So I just want to, and I feel like that's also to just encourage anyone else who's going through fire trials or going through situations or circumstances you don't understand why the Lord is allowing these things. I love what she said here is that when God gives us tests and trials, his strength is equal to that test and trial. Yeah, so the truth is God would not give you more than he can bear. If he gives you a trial or test, he's able to give you graces in order to carry whatever cross that may be, whatever trial or test that may be, inconvenience that may be. And so the precious gifts are the crosses. I've learned that too as well, because without the cross, guys, I will not be here. Not just the cross of salvation, what Jesus did for me, but without the crosses in my life, without these personal trials and tribulations I've been through these past few years, I would not be here. I would not be so in love with Jesus, so intimate with him really trusting him full of confidence i wouldn't i wouldn't have the desire and hunger for holiness as i do now i wouldn't really be detached from the opinions of men and things of the world be here on this mountain i wouldn't have take send yes to franciscan call and had my you know my whole past put behind me and pressing on forward to the mark that he has for me if it wasn't for the crosses it wasn't for the trials that brought up the things in my heart that were not of him that began to purify me if it wasn't for the crosses that brought up those things and recognizing that I had attachment to family members and friends and loved ones more than I had with Jesus if it wasn't for the crosses it wouldn't be I wouldn't understand the passion of our Lord and really what it means to deny ourselves pick up our cross and follow Jesus so if I didn't share in the crosses, I wouldn't understand uh, the Lord's consolations and sharing in his glory too as well and living for things eternal. And so um, I love that it says here, if the cross is intense for your heavy, that means he has great plans for your sanctification. And many of us who have been here, who have been called here, um, there's one, you know, brother who has struggled with that. His life is, his walk has been filled with hardship. And there may be somebody who's watching right now and is like, man, you have no idea what I've been through. Not a sense yes to Jesus, does, uh, you know, you have no idea what I've been through, you know. Little mother, since I say yes to Jesus, there's so there been so many trials and stuff, attacks that are happening. But recognize that the heavy, the cross that God is allowing your life, the greater sanctification, he's calling to a high calling of truly holiness and purity before him in all of heaven. And that's why he's allowing those crosses, because crosses sanctify us. Crosses beget holiness and beget perfection in us. And the word of God says, be perfect as your father is perfect. And that's what he desires. Crosses teach us how to love 
It teaches how love. Jesus went to the cross for the sake of love, for love. And so that's why he gives us crosses. So then we too would also learn how to love. And for the sake of love, carry our cross. And then be transformed into love, which is himself. That's why he gives us those trials and tests. And the last root, the Ravens, and I just want to show you the cards that I pulled right now. And the first card I pulled was, <laughs> I'll give the Lord God fervent thanks for every sorrow and suffering. Once again, St. Faustina. I was like, oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> and this is, I'm going to have the date on the back. This is a card I got, I think, right when I was, uh, I was about to come here. And the second one I got was, be at peace. What God has started, he will finish. But I say this to you, faithfulness to God, humility, once again, humility. And I, when I've gotten this cross, a lot of times it may be concerning like relationships and friendships that um, begin to just be tested and tried. And the Lord is saying that humble myself because pride is always about self, self-love. Pride says I don't, I, I don't deserve, I expect these things, I don't, des- I don't, I, 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 you know, about me. And the Lord is telling me once again, whatever he has started in me and even wh- whether with uh, whatever situation he allows, he's going to finish it and be at peace with it. And I should humble myself once again, humility. I should lay down my pride. And the last one I got was forgiveness. First John one nineteen. It said, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us, um, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And I was like, and he's getting, he gave that to me yesterday again. So for me right now, honestly, I'm just examining my heart because the truth, the truth, to be honest with you guys, I have gone through a lot of pain in my heart. I, I still ask the Lord to uproot and he see the bitterness and resentment, you know. And I really have made an act of my will because there's a way to, a lot of people are like, what is true forgiveness? And I think the Lord mentioned that true forgiveness is not necessarily when the pain is not there. But true forgiveness is like when you hear the person's name, you mention them like you have, you arbor no type of ill will towards them. And your reaction or response towards them is of is not of disdain or is not of hurt. And I feel that I still have a lot of healing to be done with everything that's happened when I came here with everyone turning against me, family members or friends and the slander and the things that have been said, you know, has been very painful and very hurtful. And I'd like to think that I've forgiven, but I feel like Lord's reminding me, like, no, there's still unforgiveness in your heart. And um, so I'm just going to ask him to help me that, make an act of my will to forgive those who have spoken against me, who have uh, remarked, you know, made remarks against me, who have felt, who I felt like betrayed me. You know, I just ask, make an act of my will to ask Lord to please help me to really forgive because for unforgiveness um, blocks the flow of grace. Unforgiveness is the worst thing that we can have before the Lord because how can he then forgive us if we can't forgive others? And so I know that's what he's speaking to me about. And um, I'm just going to continue asking to make an act of my will to forgive all those who have hurt me and have been wounded in the process of me walking with him, you know, to really trust him in that. And and I confess my sins before you guys that I have unforgiveness in my heart. And Jesus asks you to please help me. Please help me to truly forgive and to love those who've hurt me. Love those who have cursed me, Lord. Love those who have uh, betrayed and rejected me, Lord. I love them. Love them, Lord. Please help me. And please help me to just let go of every record of wrong. Please, Jesus. I pray. Amen. So I just want to say a prayer for you guys before I leave. Thank you for joining me. Um, once again, mornings with Little Mother. <laughs> and my readings. I hope that encourage you. And um, hope that you continue to spend time with the Lord. Sit before his feet for what he has to say. Whether it's in his word. Um, and also, too, as well, in worship. So, Father, I just thank you for this time with my brothers and sisters, and I thank you for these words that you have spoken. Jesus, I pray that I would continue to be honest, open, transparent as to the the work you're doing in my soul, growing me in brotherly love, growing me, Lord God, in virtue of obedience, Lord God, to my superiors and to all, Lord, and renouncing all of self-will, Jesus, and most importantly, learning how to love and me conforming to your image, and to really, Father God, pick up my cross and follow you and to rejoice in sorrow and suffering that you allow. Recognize that you permit all things, Lord God, for my good, for your glory. And I pray for those who are watching, who are maybe going through the exact same things, those who design intimacy with you, Jesus. I pray that hearts would be open, Lord God. Soften their hearts, Lord God. I open their ears open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to them through them, to them all day, Lord Jesus. And I pray for anyone dealing with unforgiveness, hurts, and wounds of the past. Please heal their hearts, Lord. Uproot the seeds of bitterness in our hearts, O Heavenly Father God. Forgive us for being resentful for the crosses that you allow, which brings sanctification, which brings us closer to you, Father God. Please forgive us and help us to understand, Father God, that everything that you do is indeed good, that you are good. Your ways are good, Lord God, even when we don't understand. And even the pain, the pain is even good, O Heavenly Father God, because it draws us near to you, Father God, and teaches 
Jesus, Father God, of humility and conform me to Father God to your image, Jesus, we pray. And all of these things we thank you, Lord. And we thank our sweet blessed mother and the community of saints. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys.